This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, uh, we are going to study ideal gas equation and absolute temperature. Liquid in glass thermometers show different readings for temperatures other than the fixed points because of different expansion properties. Okay. In the thermometer that we use uh, more oftenly, it shows different readings for the temperatures which are other than those fixed points because of different expansion properties. A thermometer that uses a gas, however, gives the same readings regardless of which gas is used. And even the many experiments, it shows that all gases at low density densities exhibit the same expansion behavior. Whatever may be the gas, but at low density, they'll expand to the same uh, volume. So, the variables that describe this uh, behavior of a given quantity of gas are pressure, volume and temperature. The behavior of a ga gas, the variables that describe the behavior of a Behavior of gas are the most uh, three important variables. The first one is pressure. Temperature. And volume. So, where T is equal to T plus 273.15. Okay. So, here T is the temperature in degree Celsius. Okay. See, when temperature is held constant, the pressure and volume of a quantity of a gas are related as when we take temperature as constant, then pressure and volume are related like this. PV is equal to constant. If one increases, another decreases in order to maintain this relation. So, this relationship is known as uh, Boyle's law. So, this relationship itself is known as Boyle's law. Okay. Offered, uh, after Robert Boyle, the English chemist who discovered it. When pressure is held constant, the volume quantity of the gas is related to the temperature as. So, when we consider pressure as constant, then volume is related to temperature like this. V by T is equal to constant. Okay. And this relationship is known as a Charles law. After the French scientist Jacques Charles. Low density gases obey these laws which may be combined into a single relationship. See here PV is equal to constant and V by T is equal to constant for a given quantity of gas. Then PV by T should also be a constant. Isn't it? From these two laws one thing what we got what we get is PV by T is also equal to constant. 
isn't it so this relationship is known as ideal gas law this relationship itself is known as ideal gas law it can be written in more general form that applies not just to a given quantity of a single gas but to any quantity of any dilute gas that one we call it as the ideal gas equation if you write that equation in a more general form so that it can be applied to any dilute gas so we'll call that as ideal gas equation okay so we write it as pv by t is equal to mu r or in other words we can write it as pv is equal to mu r t so where mu is the number of moles in the sample of gas mu is number of moles in the sample of gas and r is nothing but universal gas constant mu is number of moles in the sample of gas and r is universal gas constant since it is a constant it should have that constant value and the constant value for r is given by 8.31 joule per mole per kelvin okay so from this equation we learnt one thing that pressure and volume are directly proportional to temperature isn't it pressure and volume are directly proportional to temperature and this relationship allows a gas to be used to measure temperature in a constant volume gas thermometer holding the volume of a gas constant it gives if you hold volume as of the gas constant then it gives pressure directly proportional to temperature thus with constant volume gas thermometer temperature is read in terms of pressure a plot of pressure versus temperature gives a straight line that you can see in this particular figure so this is the plot of uh, temperature versus or we can say a plot of pressure versus temperature it gives the straight line isn't it you can see this See measurements of real gases deviate from the values which are predicted by the ideal gas law at low temperature but the relationship is linear over a large temperature range it so after that it it will deviate from that ideal gas law and it looks as though the pressure might reach zero with the decreasing temperature if the gas continued to be a gas so that absolute minimum temperature for an ideal gas therefore it is inferred by extrapolating the straight line to the axis as you can see in this uh, figure it is extrapolating it is extrapolated with the use of a straight line to the axis and that temperature is found to be 
minus 273.15 degree Celsius and it is designated as absolute zero. You can see in this figure minus 273 degree Celsius and it is designated as absolute zero. Okay. And this absolute zero is the foundation of Kelvin temperature scale or absolute scale temperature which is uh, named after the British scientist that is Lord Kelvin. So this minus 273.15 degrees Celsius is taken as zero point on the Kelvin scale. So that is uh, zero Kelvin. Okay, the size of the unit for Kelvin temperature is uh, same as Celsius degree. So, temperature on these scales are related by the equation that we already know. T is equal to Tc plus Two seventy three plus one five, where this TC is temperature in degree Celsius. Isn't it? So these two are related with this equation. You can see in this figure the comparison of the Kelvin, Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature scales. Absolute zero in Kelvin scale it is uh, zero Kelvin and in uh, this degree Celsius that is minus 273.15 degree Celsius in the Fahrenheit scale it is minus 459.69 degrees Celsius and uh, ice point we can that is freezing point and it is in uh, 273.15 Kelvin in the Kelvin scale and it is 0 degree Celsius in the Celsius scale and 32 degree Fahrenheit in the Fahrenheit scale and the boiling point or we can call it as stream point that is given by 373.15 Kelvin in the Kelvin scale, 100 degrees Celsius in the Celsius scale and in Fahrenheit scale it is um, given by 212 that means 212 degree Fahrenheit. So this is the comparison for three different scales that we use for the measurement of temperature. Okay. In the next part, uh, we are going to study about the thermal expansion. So, how the, what we can say, the matter reacts to the increase in temperature.